So that's a, that's a good mm-hmm. segue mm-hmm. Into, into our next question is we like to ask some regional history questions. Because that tends to, to be a little bit more unique. Um, so mm-hmm. what's something for you that's a, a regional, it doesn't have to be like an eye-opening thing, but a, a piece of regional history that if I were to come visit you in Illinois, everybody in the local area would be like, oh, yeah, we remember this kind of little historical piece of, of Illinois history or whatever's more local to you. And I would probably have never heard of it. Well, I think, you know, I think we were talking before we uh, started recording here. Yeah. Honestly, where I live in, in Galesburg, Illinois, it's the Lincoln Douglas debate site. I suppose that's yep. maybe not the earth shattering history for everybody when they come to this area. But <laughs> if there's somebody who comes here and it's like, well, you know, what do you, what do you have here that's historic? I always point yeah. them to that. Um, so uh, Lincoln Douglas debate site on the, the campus of Knox College here in, in Galesburg, Illinois. And I want to say October, and I can't remember the exact date, October 1858 uh, was when, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas debate there. Mm-hmm. You know, people always forget cool. about, you know, they think about the Lincoln. I don't know if you guys have studied the Lincoln Douglas debates uh, very much, but of course, Abraham Lincoln was completely unknown before he mm-hmm. challenged Stephen Douglas. And of course, Stephen Douglas was the leading senator in the Senate. And uh, yeah. so when he challenges him and they arrange these debates, it's kind of the first time that we see candidates actually getting up in front of an audience and facing off with one another. But, you yeah. know, what's interesting about those debates and sorry, I'm going to start getting into the whole debate thing. Those debates, yeah, it was like and I forget I, I forget the format. You know, today we think of like Trump and Hillary yelling at each other mm-hmm. right. on, yeah. you know, on, on national news. But yeah. back then it was the first candidate got to get up and talk for an hour and a half. Then the next candidate would get up and talk Holy for an cow. hour. Then the other one would get up for like 45 minutes. And then the other one would get up for 30 minutes. It was like an all day, like four or five hour event uh, when they would wow. have these debates. But the, the funny thing is, is here in Galesburg, um, they had it at Knox College. And uh, there's a park right across the street from, from this old main building at Knox College. They intended on having it in the park because they were like, we can accommodate the 20,000 people who are going to come for this. In sure. the park. Well, the, the thing was the night before they had a big storm and it was too muddy to have it in the yeah. park. And so they moved it to the end of this building at Knox College. And so they built this platform on the end of the building for the candidates to stand up on. Well, they built it and then they realized we didn't build steps for anybody to get on top of the platform. Oh, and so no. the only way to get on the platform was you had to climb through a window of the Knox College old main building to get onto the platform. And so the story oh, wow. is, is that when they when they climb out this window, Abraham Lincoln comes out and immediately, immediately stands up and says, finally, I've gone through college, was what he said, because you know, <laughs> he never went to college. Yes, and so sure. that was his, stu- they, they, you know, they say Lincoln was the king of dad jokes. And so, you know, that yeah. was his joke when he got out, got out of the window. So, so anyway, but again, yeah, the Lincoln Douglas debate, one of, one of them taking place here. And of course, Lincoln loses that election to Stephen Douglas, but it thrust him into the national spotlight and it leads mm-hmm. to him getting the Republican nomination a couple of years later. So, mm-hmm. so it is kind of cool to think about the fact that, you know, here it is, you know, kind of podunk Illinois, kind of where I live yeah. at, but yet here's the site that was an instrumental step leading to arguably the greatest president in American history, getting yes. to the presidency and leading us through the civil war and, and, and everything. So, so yeah, that's always, you know, I actually, I have a bell ringer video, one of my older ones that I recorded yeah. from on location right there at the Lincoln Douglas debate site. Uh, I probably that's should update that, that video because it's, yeah, it's, it's one of my older ones, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it, it's just a, it's, it's a cool thing to go down there and be able to see, you know, where mm-hmm. everything happened and every, and all that. So that's probably the regional thing for, you know, for me in, in my town, sure. what, what, what we, what, what I have. Yeah, and, and and when you mention it, right, I'm very good at like, oh yeah, that sounds familiar, right? That, that's that's yeah. how my brain works. But I I, I wouldn't be able to mm-hmm. tell you, you know, too much more about, you know, when Link as Lincoln was coming on to the to the national scene. But mm-hmm. that's that's one of the things that I really enjoy about this question is we've had the chance to talk to a few folks so far mm-hmm. and, and more in the future, you know, that are kind of all around the country, and and hopefully it'll expand from there. But uh, it's really neat to hear that super local history that it's super common for right? everybody in town probably knows like, oh, yeah, that's it over there. It's the Lincoln Douglas. Uh, they had their debate mm-hmm. over there, and that's a big deal, and that's when kind of Lincoln burst onto the scene right here, you know, 
And um, mm-hmm. it's, it's always neat for me to, to learn that, you know, a, as I get older and I sure. start to appreciate it. And I think more. it's great to show American history is everywhere. Yeah. Even in little towns, they do have a major mm-hmm. influence. Even your little town had a major influence. Yeah. And like you said, arguably the greatest president we have ever had. Like there was a mm-hmm. moment there and there wasn't a, a likability to Lincoln. And he was, he was, he was able to deliver his, his ideas well. That's why there's a whole Gettysburg address, like one of the shortest, mm-hmm. what is it, 272 words, but one of the greatest speeches yeah. ever given, yeah. right? He's able to mm-hmm. deliver his words in such a way that makes such an impact that that's one of the ways he comes onto the scene so fast and gets so much popularity. Uh, and I think that's amazing that even there he can, and I, isn't he, was he born in Illinois? No, he's born in Kentucky, but born he's in Kentucky. buried in Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. He's buried in, in Springfield, yeah, in Springfield, Illinois. Yeah. So, yes. um, okay. but, but yeah, you know, when you think about Lincoln too, I think what's fascinating is that he's such an iconic figure. I mean, he dies at the exact height of his career mm-hmm. and, you yes. know, of course there's so much, what if, what if he had survived, would he still yep. be remembered the way he is? But, you know, when you think about Lincoln, you just think, oh, well, he's always been an iconic American, you know, whatever, American icon, American hero, mm-hmm. whatever you sure. want to say. But honestly, when you look at his career, he lost election after election after election. And for most of his oh, career, he was a failure in politics. And mm-hmm. I mean, he was a good lawyer, wow. but he was a failure in politics. And honestly, nobody knew who he was until about two years before he gets elected president. And then, you know, in the matter of six years from 1858, well, seven years until 1865 when he dies, you know, it's really only seven years of American history that he's really instrumental, but he's instrumental at arguably the most important point in American history. And yes, uh, so, and, so, yeah, and I think it's, I think it's fascinating to think about that. It is. And it's fascinating to think that really half of the country hates him, you know, when yeah. he's president, you know, he is kind of like hated by half of the country, yeah. you know, like even when I go to the South, it is, sometimes Lincoln doesn't have the best reputation in the South. And I'm always surprised by mm-hmm. that, I guess. And I guess I shouldn't be, but it's interesting, you know, that, to be the president of this country and to know that you are re- you're really trying to bring this country together, but there are people who really don't even view you as the president. Like he never got, mm-hmm. I feel bad for, I feel, you know, president Lincoln to my, never got to live in how we see him today. Right. Yeah. He never got to feel that from the country, yeah. right. The way we look at him today, the way we are appreciative of what he did for America in his time, he never got to, 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 feel that from america you know it was like what what did you have like four days after the war yeah (laughs) yeah it was like yeah yeah like literally five days after lee surrenders (laughs) have you guys been to springfield illinois before i I know since you traveled quite a bit and everything have you been you you have to go to the lincoln presidential library it is hands down the coolest historic site i've ever been to i mean i know a lot of historic people kind of rip on it because they're like it's disney meets history but they okay. really, I mean, they have special effects and lights and all kinds of stuff that, I mean, oh, I, I'll cool. take students there and they think it's just the most amazing thing. But they have this really cool display there. You walk down this hallway and all of the hallway is like all the angles of the of the room are like skewed and there's like mm-hmm. these weird lights and everything. But all over the room are all these like weird abstract like shaped frames. And in each frame is a political cartoon ripping on Abraham Lincoln. And you kind of oh, see wow. how when he was president, people hated him that you know he he didn't get to see that he was so loved and that he had done so many great things and throughout his whole presidency i mean you just see like they say you know how we don't think about abraham lincoln having you know other politicians in the newspapers and media attacking him and when you look at what he really had to go through i mean that it was nothing but attacks uh on him the whole time he was president yeah yeah and so yeah if you get the chance to go there you, you need to check it out it is it is it's an awesome place to visit I would love to do that. That's probably something on our list. I, you know, I uncovered some unique Abraham Lincoln history. I don't know if you ever watched that second Arlington video I made, Jared, but Ichabod Crane's son. So Washington Irving served with a man named Ichabod mm-hmm. Crane, and that's where he got the name for his protagonist hmm. in Legend of uh-huh. Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. But his son is buried in Arlington. And his son really? was a, yes, and his son was a, doctor in the union army and when president lincoln is shot his son is the attending physician across the street in the peterson house 
Dr. Crane. Really? Yes. Yeah. And he is there when, when President Lincoln dies. Yeah. It was, now he, it was he, just like, he, he wasn't the Surgeon General, was he? At the time, I forget. I, he might. I, I, I don't been. remember. He was a general. I don't yeah. know if he was the surgeon. I can't remember. But I forget what the physicians... surgeon general. Yeah, yeah. But well, I forget what the surgeon general's name was. Yeah, but I always tell my students this story. I know it's really gross and everything. This story, <laughs> but they say the surgeon general. And I, and I can't even think of his name off the top of my head. He comes with the Peterson House after Lincoln gets shot, and mm-hmm. of course, standard procedure back then. You know, since they had just been through the Civil War, standard procedure was. You stuck your finger in the bullet wound to see how deep oh, yeah. the bullet was oh, yeah. to be able to yeah. see if you could get it out. And so they say the Surgeon General came in, you know, no gloves, completely bare hand, put his yeah. finger right into the bullet hole. And they say he oh, actually gosh. pushed the bullet deeper into Lincoln's oh. head and that yeah. actually he probably sped Lincoln's death by doing that. Yeah. And I, I, said, I, I forget where I read that, but I was like, Barnes, like wow, Joseph that's really Barnes great. was his. <laughs> Does that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Joseph Barnes was the surgeon general. So, so um, Crane must've been just like an attending who was there with him. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Jared, that's the same. Cause I worked at the, um, the James Garfield house. I did an internship hmm. at the James Garfield house. And so same thing when James Garfield was uh, assassinated. Mm-hmm. And he he lingers for a couple months. It's because the doctors uh-huh. kept putting dirty instruments <laughs> into his body, trying to find the the bullet. And they, he gets blood poisoning and dies. Yeah, you know. And his the guy who kills him, um, his whole defense is I shot him, but I didn't kill him. The doctors killed him, which that was which is true. Really? Which is true. Mm-hmm. That's his defense. I mean, he gets uh-huh. executed anyway, but yeah. that's his defense because it is true. If they would have left the bullets alone. Same thing with McKinley. Well, McKinley, they stitched him up and he, he dies. But um, if they just would have left it alone, that bullet wouldn't have killed him. It didn't penetrate any organs. But it was them. Poking around and giving him blood poisoning with their dirty hands. It's just interesting to see how medicine is. Thank goodness medicine has come to the point it has today. Otherwise, you know, we should write a book. How many doctors are how many presidents are killed by their doctors? Because, I mean, Washington. Yeah. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Washington. Yeah. If if Washington (laughs) what would have listened to the first doctor or whatever instead of the second one. Yeah. yeah, He would have probably made it. (laughs) That's so interesting when you talk about Lincoln. Because I, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I remember learning that, that how many failures he had, mm-hmm. you know, before he finally was elected and kind of, again, thrust into the national spotlight and became president. I mean, it sounds when you were when you were saying that, I don't know if you guys ever remember, and maybe this was just me in Central California listening to the radio as I'm driving to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. But Paul Harvey is an old kind of very, yeah. very famous radio host. And he always used to do those, mm-hmm. those bits called the rest of the story. Mm-hmm. Right. And he would talk about someone mm-hmm. without naming them mm-hmm. and tell them, tell all these things. You're like, man, who's this like super interesting person. They're like failing and failing and failing and doing this, that, and the other. And he's like, and then the rest of the story is, and then the next year, Abraham Lincoln was, you know, elected mm-hmm. president and, you know, led the country through the civil war and stuff like that. So it sounded like just one of those things. And that's just kind of a little bit like what we talked about before was context. Yes. We, we, we lose a lot of that context and, and that honestly, like, I mean, that's a great example, right? And as a teacher, I'm sure if you're bringing that up, there's probably at least one or two students that'll probably, that'll sink in and like, Hey, I don't have to succeed every single time. Look yes. at Abraham Lincoln. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, Failed yeah. and failed and failed and failed, and then you know, kind of kept kept going at it. Um, but yeah. again, that that context and that that larger picture is is always neat for me to, mm-hmm. to to learn about. Thank you, Jared, for being on the History Buzz with us tonight. Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. And uh, anytime you want to talk again, let me know because I'm a, this, was, this was a great conversation. Jared. You know, we're kind absolutely. of thinking a lot of the same things and. Yes. Yeah, well, so to you. our listeners, thank you. Thank you for listening to the History Buzz. If you are interested in being a guest on the History Buzz, you can reach out to us at thehistorybuzz.com. That is thehistorybuzz.com. And don't forget to leave us a review anywhere you can. And until next time, my friends, as the Mandarin toast goes, Gombe. Gombe. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.